Hello Internet. Today I have two eaten, beaten, scratched, and scraped to death 2080s. I'll start with this one. We'll take it apart and see if we find anything interesting. After visual inspection, I found a little bit of corrosion around pecs. Not sure what problems we're gonna have because of that, so I'll ignore this for now and start with measurements which are looking good. Now let's power it on and see what it does. I'll be using my latest and greatest invention, one end of which plugs into the bottom of the GPU, another end to the top. And with a clicker of a switch, I will go over each power rail and see if we have all of the voltages. Looks like one of the 12 volt rails is missing. And uh, consequently, core memory and packs are also missing. So let's have a look around. In order for the 12 volt to be present on this coil, all of these transistors have to work. If we look down, we find exact same thing that we can use as a reference for our measurements. The main point of interest is the gate pin on each transistor. I'll check which ones have voltage on the gate and which ones don't. Then I want to see the same voltage on both input and output, so let's see. Input of 12 volt is present on the bottom of the board and on the top of the board. Now let's check for gates. We have no voltage on the bottom two gates. And uh, 17 volt on the top two gates. Now let's move up the board and we have no voltage at the bottom two gates and no voltage on the top two gates either, which explains why there is no output. According to the board view, these gates are connected in parallel and uh, connected to zero ohm resistors on the back of the board. So let's look over there. Once there, I was greeted with a horror of knocked off and ripped components revealing a much deeper problem than originally anticipated. Basically, everything you can imagine is in one place, and, uh, and the logical thing to do at this point is to solder everything back in and see if that helps. Okay, components had been replaced. Now, let's see if we have any power. 12 volt, 5 volt, and 1.8 volt are there. Uh, uh, no pecs, but we do have core and memory. Okay, we don't have pecs, so let's take a closer look. If you remember, we had some corrosion here and some components fell off as uh, results. So let's put those back on and see if that helps. 
Dealing with corrosion is much harder because surface is oxidized and solder does not want to stick to it. So one must scrape away all that oxidation one way or another in order to attach the component to the pad. With that done, we now have PEX. So let's boot the card and run a memory test. Okay, we have a pass. And while card is running, I'll go ahead and check all power stages to make sure all of them work correctly and it looks like two are a bit long. But after testing it again, it looked about the same but ever so slightly longer. Almost hard to see. My best guess is something is still missing on the back of the board affecting the feedback circuit and we just need to find it. Replacing a good number of missing capacitors later revealed to be a waste of time. So it was time to start looking into each feedback line, identifying possible cause along the way. After reflowing and testing feedback for each sense pin and finding no issues there, my last suspect is the controller itself. So let's replace it and see if that helps. Controller was replaced, but the problem did not go away. One last suspect is the power steering chip. There are also two of them on the board, so we can compare one to another. And the reason why I decided to look into them is if, if we go back to our 12 volt coils, one was reading slightly over 12 volt as it should, while another was reading slightly under 12 volt, but they both should be the same. To test the steering chip, I'll be using this diagram. I'll start with voltage measurements on the working chip and compare it to the non-working one. And I found BCC to be a little low, but it, uh, it's within the spec, so. Then I'll compare the signals of a working chip and it looks like we don't have a waveform here. Not knowing what can cause this, I decided to solder the missing capacitor on the right, testing it again, and this time it worked. So now I have just over 12 volt on that coil. And if we look at the wave signals, it is now looking like the rest of them. Anyway, hopefully by this time you've learned that not having back cover protecting components on the back can cause issues that are very hard to diagnose. And with that done, this GPU is working as it should. I've ran the tests for some time to make sure. Even played a little game. That's all the game time I get these days is when I test these things. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have learned something today and I wish you the very best. Morgan Freeman, signing out, goodbye. Get to the chopper.